Hey guys, welcome back. It's Nail Art 101 time, a series on my channel where we're going to kind of go over the basics of nail art together. I'm just going to be demonstrating some techniques today. I'm not really trying to teach you because I am not a professional. You will discover here as we're trying to do some line work that I am not a robot. There's going to be some imperfections, but we're just trying to go over these techniques together. So um, yeah, I hope you have been enjoying this series. Today we're going to be talking about line work. So line work is a pretty essential thing when it comes to nail art and kind of a tricky thing to, I, would, I don't want to say master because I definitely haven't mastered it. Um, I have actually been asked if I will show you guys how to water down my acrylic paint. This is about a dime size of acrylic paint in my palette and basically I just take the end of my paintbrush, I dip it into some water sitting beside me and I just drop to like two to three droplets on it. So um, again, I mean you can see there my paintbrush to give you kind of a reference point for how big of a spot this is and I'm taking my detail brush and I'm just mixing it in and then I will drag the paint away so you can see like what kind of consistency it is. You really don't want it to be as thick as acrylic paint is naturally because it's just going to, it's not going to give you as um, ease of movement that you want. So here I am dragging it away. Um, hopefully you can see kind of how it should be. It kind of, it should kind of be in between super thick and way too thin. So here are the four um, designs we're going to, I'm just going to kind of demonstrate today. Basically, we're just going to be going over getting used to drawing a straight line. And, and like I said, that can be tricky. It's one of actually the most difficult techniques we're going to go over on Nail Art 101. Okay, so I'm going to be using these two brushes today. The shorter one is actually much longer than my tiny detail brush, and it is the brand Kiss. I have talked about this a few times before in Nail Art 101. This is a screenshot of the... Um, the Kiss Nail Art Paint and Stencil Kit that you can get. I find it at Walgreens, I find it at Walmart, um, but this is a screenshot finding it at drugstore.com. I know I have heard some of you telling me you are frustrated because you can't find this product. So let me just tell you really quick. I heard about this product from Spiffster. She, by the way, is amazing with her line work. One of the best that I have found. Um, Freehand, I mean, we started going into freehand last week with our animal print, and this week we're going into one of the toughest subjects of freehand, and that is line work because it is really hard to keep your lines straight for the length of the nail. Spiffster is really such a goddess at it, and if you follow her, um, I will link her down below, but if you follow her Instagram, you will get lots of inspiration, and she's just really great. So anyway, I learned about this nail brush from her. So this is the brush that she actually used, or uses, and she posted about it on her Instagram. So what she does, and what I am doing, is she takes these nail art um, kits. She just, Do you see there how you can see the brush on the right-hand side of the kit? Um, it has a silver top and she takes it out of the nail, um, you know, the polish, what is that, bottle. <laughs> she takes it out of the bottle, completely cleans it out, throws away the bottle. You don't even need the bottle because the, um, the polish there, you know, isn't really the special thing. The thing that she likes is the brush. Um, it's easy to hold on to. It's a good length, a good width. You don't really have to chop it down a lot. So she likes the striper part of this kit but not the paint. So if that's been confusing for anybody who's been trying to find this, I have not been talking about just a single brush. I have, I've mentioned this before but just in case it was super confusing I wanted to just be completely you know detailed about this. So you want to buy this whole kit like this because this is how it comes but then you just use the brush out of the striper bottle. All right, so I hope that's really clear. This shows you what it's going for um, online. It's pretty much the same exact price if you just want to hop into your Walgreens or your Walmart and pick it up there. So that is the smaller brush that I'm using. The other brush that I'm using is a larger, a longer striping brush that you can find, you know, any kind. I think I got mine off of Amazon. Um, I'm going to show both of them today, how to use both of them, but I prefer the smaller one just so that you know because um, having learned throughout the years, the longer one is good um, 
the longer one is good if you are just like so expert at keeping your hands steady for a long period of time. But the shorter one I like because it gives you that length to go across the nail, but you don't have to be so, so delicate. And what happens with the longer one, as you'll see when I demonstrate in a minute, is that it's really easy to lose control with those really long brushes. Okay, so um, you will see there in a minute what I'm talking about, but let's keep on going. So the other products that we're going to use is this Apple Barrel Acrylic Paint in Black. It doesn't have to be Apple Barrel. And as I showed you, I watered it down. Milani Quick Dry Top Coat. I like this. It's not necessarily my favorite, but it's good. And then we're using a polish, nail polish underneath, which is in the shade Masquerade from the Venetian Carnival Collection. You don't have to use that. Of course, I'm just demonstrating these techniques over the top of it. But I just wanted to let you know what that is on my nail, that beautiful polish there. Okay, so line work. Drawing a line straight down, straight across, straight diagonal, whatever you want to do. Straight on your nail. This looks like it's simple, but it's not. You really have to get used to just holding your hand really still. Okay, so I am demonstrating it first for you here underneath my camera with my finger straight on the table. If you're going to go get your nails done at a salon or whatever, I bet you 9 out of 10 times your um, technician's not going to have you just place your hand on the table to do it. I'm just doing it this way because that is how I can most easily demonstrate the work for you under my camera. But 9 times out of 10, she's going to hold your hand so that it's much more easily maneuverable for you. So when you go to do this yourself, you can attempt to do it this way if you would like to. Everybody has their own preferences. I'm not going to tell you how you have to do it. But I actually find it's easier to just hold my hand right in front of my face like um, you're going to see here when I do the next finger. So basically because holding your, holding your nail flat on the table doesn't give you a very easy, easy range of movement. What it does is it makes you have to move the brush rather than move your hand. So when you're trying to create a nice long line, it's actually easier to move your hand. So it's easier to place the brush down and then roll your finger in the direction away from your brush rather than moving the brush. And that is just something you find after trying it a number of times. If this looks very scary, don't be scared. I've been I don't want to say I've been doing nail art for a long time because that makes me sound like I'm really experienced or something, which I'm not. I just mean to say, when I first started, I couldn't make a straight line for anything. You know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say, and see there, look, I messed up too because it's on the curve of my nail. The very top of your nail is going to be the easiest, especially if you're trying to hold your hand flat on the table. That is the most difficult way to do it, <laughs> okay? So I'm just going to keep showing you some more lines here as we talk. I'm going to go ahead and do... Um, kind of a grid pattern on this nail. Basically just lots of lines. So this is what you want to do when you're trying to not perfect this technique, but you know, make gains is just practicing it. Just practice, practice, practice like everything else, all the other ones on here, like I've been telling you, you just have to practice it. And um, I'm using acrylic paint. Don't worry if it goes off on the side of your finger, just like Nail polish, I mean, it's easy to get it up, but with acrylic paint, you want to go ahead and use alcohol instead of, you know, rubbing alcohol instead of um, acetone or nail polish remover. It's going to come up much easier with rubbing alcohol. And the other really nice thing is actually if you, let's say you completely hated this design after you were done or and you just wanted to go back to the beautiful hollow underneath, all you would have to take is um, a cotton pad and alcohol and you could just rub it right off and it wouldn't mess up your nail polish at all. That is the other main reason I love working in acrylic paint. So um, yeah, I was satisfied with this one so I went ahead and top coated it. That was probably after it had been sitting there for like five minutes. Give your um, nail art time to sit before you top coat it. All right, so this is actually the way that I do my nails. When I'm actually sitting here doing my nails and I'm not trying to focus in front of the camera, see, because I'm holding my hand up here, I don't I don't really have as good of idea how well I'm going to be in frame for you guys, which is why I'll go out of frame in a little bit. But I want to show you the technique here. So watch me. This is the longer brush, by the way. See how long that brush is? This is how you would do. Place it down, then move your hand 
don't move the brush. The first time I was showing you I was moving the brush a lot more than the hand. I was kind of doing both of them. But this way I'm really showing you and it's essential with this super long striping brush that's really, you know, you can find oodles of them on Amazon, these really long ones. You really have to move your hand because what happens is, I mean, look at that, two inches away from the, the end of the brush where the where the um, hairs go into the barrel you're gonna have like absolutely no control over that very tippy tip end and then what happens is there you can see my third finger I was messing around a little bit more with that, with that design it's so hard to keep it straight so so hard so like I said this brush is the one you want to use if you are more experienced at your line work not less and it's funny because I found this brush before I found the one I'm currently working with. And I would say that this is for the, the better technician. <laughs> Much better than me, that's for sure. So anyway, if you have one of these and you're finding it frustrating because you're losing control at the end of your stroke, I mean, I get you. I totally understand that. Um, you know, I have the same experience with you. I'm actually going to go ahead and complete this whole nail using this brush even though it's not my preferred one so that I can still demonstrate to you how to use it if you have it. So um, yeah I'm just actually going to go ahead and make a bunch of um, horizontal lines and then I'm going to kind of make them into a design but I just want to you know most of this video is just to really get you a lot of footage just looking at me making lines because if you go ahead and make a whole set on your hand like this, just that in itself is going to give you a lot of practice at making lines. So see how my pinky is resting on my hand? It's resting, my working pinky is resting on my stable hand. That makes it so much easier for me to not be jittery, not make bumps. Um, of course, like I always tell you guys, this is an intense close-up of your hand, of my hand in this case. Nobody's going to be looking this close at your nail art. But without that stability there, the likelihood of me being able to even make this close of, you know, a straight line, I'm speeding up here because, you know, we're making straight lines here. But anyway, um, I decided to go ahead and make a little bit more interesting design rather than just stripes but anyway I was saying if you don't rest see I'm still resting there I'm always resting that hand on something sorry that I'm out of frame here but um because you really have to have that balance for your hand it's just your hand if it's just left wavering in the wind it can't it can't maintain stability so what I decided to do with this design is I wanted to go like a really thick stripe at the top and get thinner and thinner sorry as we go to the bottom of the nail toward the cuticle. So I actually was switching back and forth between holding it up close to my face and, um, you know, putting it down flat on the table. And even though this was kind of, you know, raucous, I decided to go ahead and include this because this is how I would actually do this. I would pull it up close to my face, look at my pinky, balancing the whole time, um, not balancing, stabilizing. Um, and then I would switch to on the table so that I could see, you know, just some, from farther away to see how it looks really. And then at this point I was like, you know, this really needs something else. So I'm deciding to outline the whole thing. Um, just really melt it, made it feel like it was more clean this way. So I just added one extra tight line at the very base of the cuticle and then one messy swipe here on the side, on both sides, but I clean this up with acetone and then here we go for the top coat. So that is the second nail done. We did lots of vertical and horizontal lines on the first one and then this one's just more clean stripes, a more, more probably more of a design that I would typically do. So. Um, we are going to go ahead and do another nail and this is just some more vertical lines. I'm just basically just demonstrating for you here. Okay, so what happens if you get going and you've given your hand too much pressure and so it's made one of your lines way bigger than the other one? Well, that's real easy. You just purposefully make it much bigger and then you can do an alternating design of big and small lines. So as you see there, if I touch much more delicately, to my nail I will get a much thinner line but it makes logical sense right that if I let my full brush like all the hairs touch down to my nail I'm going to have that width of 
line on my finger, right? So that's a reason for taking down the density of your brushes in general, your detail brushes, your lining brushes, but actually this one from Kiss is pretty thin. Um, but, but really, if you let it lay fully, you know, if you give it a lot of pressure, the hairs are going to expand out and they're going to make your line, um, you know, wider just naturally. So this is the last finger. I actually decided to go ahead and recreate a design I've done in the past. I think it's shown up in the first part of one of these nail art videos before. And so I just decided to go ahead and recreate it because I get some comments sometimes saying, uh, you know, asking for me to go ahead and redo my past designs. We are getting to the end of this video. So I'm, as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to top coat it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that you give this a try. Don't be scared to try it out. I hope that you pick up that brush if you've been wondering where it was. And as always, leave me comments letting me know what you guys want to see next. If there is a specific um, you know, piece of my nail art that you saw in the beginning of this video that you would like me to do a tutorial on or walk through or whatever, just let me know. I would be more than happy to do that for you. And yeah, here is the finished design on all four nails coming up. I hope you enjoyed. Man, that glossy top goes just makes such a big difference because that acrylic paint dries matte. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. This series has been so much fun for me because I really need to do more nail art. That has been one of my goals in 2016, and this is helping me accomplish it. Um, go out and have a really great day. Play with your nails and play with your nail art, and I will see you guys soon. Bye. So next up we have this super awesome hot orange. Something about this shade made it more doable over white for some reason. I'm not really sure what that reason is. This is called Pants on Fire! Exclamation point. I think I would still probably put this over a light orange instead of the white next time I do it. Um,